The third dam on the Columbia River is John Day Dam just east of Biggs, Oregon. This dam is a little interesting because it was built out of order from the rest. There used to be a large free flowing section from Biggs all the way up to Umatilla. This stretch of river was not particularly steep, didn't have any rapids, and the barges of the time could go up and down the river even at flood stage. However, as river traffic increased and the volume of freight got bigger, this area of the river definitely needed to be upgraded to slack water. The dam was completed in 1971, finally bridging the gap, allowing for slack water navigation all the way from Portland to the confluence of the Snake River. And combined with the four dams on the Snake, you could now ship ocean-going vessels all the way up to Lewiston, Idaho. This is actually one of the larger dams on the lower river, over 100 feet tall. It has the largest lock chamber on the entire river system and somehow manages to be the, one of the more visually boring dams on the river. Seriously, this thing is just a straight line across. There's really nothing all that interesting to it. It's very core of engineers, very minimalistic in its design. Also, I've had some river captains tell me that it is their least favorite dam to lock through. Something about some rocks in the channel upstream that they never got rid of. But due to its height and also the volume of the river, this is actually the second largest power station in the entire Pacific Northwest. This enormous powerhouse has 16 generators, which are capable of producing 2.1 gigawatts of carbon-free energy. Unfortunately, this dam is also pretty light on visitor facilities, and it's not that visually interesting, but it's still a very important part of the Pacific Northwest's infrastructure. I give John Day Dam four stars out of five for benefits, two stars for design, and one star for access.